Hi everyone, if you are new to my channel, my name is Brunel. If you are not, then of course, as usual, this is my usual greeting. Uh, you already know my name. Thank you very much for um, watching this. So uh, this is not the normal stuff that I do. As you guys know, I normally do makeup stuff and reviews and all sorts. Um, but for those of you who've been with me for a very, very long time or have come across my video, uh, you've seen the title, uh, you know, um, I'm just giving you kind of like an, an update on um, how I'm doing now. Um, just in case you're out there and you've suffered something similar, um, I had a stroke in uh, December 2016. And so it's been a few years now and I've gone through some um, major pivotal changes. Um, I've not scripted this at all, so I have no idea what I'm going to say. Um, but I think uh, what I want to make clear from the outset is that this is going to have, I mean, I am going to break some difficulties that I still have, um, some complications and therefore some of the things are negative, but they're going to be at the beginning, but I don't want that to kind of be something that you take away from this video because it really isn't. I think this video for me is more about, um, an understanding of self and a growth within myself and an acceptance of some things and and moving on and so on so it's actually an overall really positive uh video um and i'm hoping that obviously that if you've suffered something similar you've had a stroke or something else that's affected you uh in a major way that's um you know forced you to take changes in your make changes in your life that um you know whether you're at the very beginning of that or you're somewhere in the middle or you've even gone past my stage where i am um then i hope that you find this useful so this is an update um you know three years after a stroke and um, what that's like so i'm going to start off with the negatives because i want to finish off as I said, with the, the positives um how i am now i am different but i'm also the same but i'm more of a more of more than the old me um it's a weird way of describing it i think for me um there are still uh, physical complications um there are mental complications um and it's a strange thing for me i just uh, you know for me to accept and re uh, and i finally just realized it recently when it comes to mental health issues and so on that i am part of that group that 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 is also me and it took a long time uh, for me to be able to sit back and think wait that actually is me that there are some things that, that i'm um you know um not necessarily 100 percent okay with um but it's trying to understand that and trying to make peace with that um, one of the side effects that I'm just about to start yawning, uh, which is something that sort of happens um, if I have a kind of a really long conversation or if I'm really tired, then I'll just start yawning away and it, it's non-stop. So if you see me yawning, I'll try and cut it out, but do ignore that. Um, Memory-wise, um, I'm a lot better with my memory. I think it's more the short-term stuff that still is affected. It is not as bad as it used to be. However, uh, the biggest thing for me three years after having had that stroke um, is that I have to be very, very self-aware. I have to manage my stress levels very, very, uh, very, very well. I'm almost like, um, I have to be on a kind of happy equilibrium. And if I, if for any reason I don't manage my stress and I get overworked, that goes like this and everything goes down. Then everything gets gets affected. My speech then becomes a more slurred. Um, I get tired much more uh, easily. Yawn coming up. I finish yawning. So um, my uh, speech, it gets slurred. Um, my memory then gets really, really affected. Uh, and you can really notice uh, the difference. Um, it kind of reverts back. So everything has to be managed very, very carefully. Um, and for me, that's something that's difficult for me to, to kind of still grasp at this stage in life. Um, and so I need to make sure that I'm quite a happy person, which is why I'm usually very, very positive because I understand the effect that that will have on me if I don't make an effort to be much more positive and I have a greater outlook on, on life itself. But it is very easy for things to be, for an imbalance to cause my, more issues for me. Um, I suffer from, um, you know, anxiety of quite a lot. Um, I get very, very nervous, even in situations where I know within myself there is no need, I can't help it. I will get very, very nervous. 
um, I will get extremely anxious and uh, when I mean anxious as in sleepless um, nights as in knots in the stomach as in uh, literally almost like panic attacks that, that will happen um, so I have to kind of I, I, I can't cope with major surprises very well I don't I can't cope with you know sudden changes of you do this now very well I need time to be able to process the whole thing for it to make sense in my brain before I'm okay with it so major changes or super quick constant changes kind of throw me um, as well um, and even something as simple as a journey to somewhere that I've never been I will be on Google Street View just looking at building familiarizing myself with buildings and what it looks like and the journey and how you get there and which station you go to I literally will go through the whole journey to try and have a look and understand as much as possible and when I do that then that puts me at ease um, it makes me less nervous because I, I couldn't just do what I used to do which was you know come on kids get the kids in the car where are we going I don't know put petrol in the car and just drive that's what I used to do I can't do that um, uh, and maybe one day it will change but I, I just, for the time being I, I, I can't do that so I get very very anxious um, yeah so that that's a major major issue for me because I never used to be like that I, I wasn't really phased by too many things um, and um, I had to really just kind of just push 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 and keep going and keep going and keep going um, and to a certain extent it's not a negative thing as such because it's what's brought me as far as I have uh, where I am now um, and but it is something that you do have to acknowledge I think it, you do yourself a disservice it's a fine balance between acknowledging difficulties that you have and ignoring them if you ignore them it's counterproductive you never get the opportunity to really do, deal with stuff that you're going through and get better but if you spend too much time dwelling on the negative it also becomes counterproductive because then you have no hope of improving yourself as well so it's a really fine balance to find um, to get um, and I struggle with that most of the time I'm actually okay fundamentally I understand where I am and who I am and that's the greatest gift that I've ever had ever since this stroke um, that I know who I am I think you can really spend a whole lifetime not not only not knowing who you are but not even realizing that it's something that you're searching for that is something that once you understand that there is a sense of peace that I can't I can't really put I can't explain and I don't necessarily know that I would have had that now without having had the stroke without that you know having to deal with her having had a stroke um so I have to look at the negatives and, and accept those as part and parcel of life and allow myself to be able to to move on but it is very very difficult for me I was a very very active person I was super big I mean look my arms are still look, look, these are my arms <laughs> this is I used to be a proper proper fitness person and I do try but at times I do get very very knackered very very quickly um, and yeah so that's the mental side of it that uh, I need to be very very careful and very self-aware of how I cope with things and the situation around around me because it can really spiral um, and it then affects everything and not only does it affect me kind of emotionally is where I, I can't sleep and I start getting panic attacks and and I can't rest and um, also I slow down physically I get affected by that as well uh, I become much more tired and memory as I said earlier as well um, and what else other things will happen as well it's, it's a whole thing that process that will take place so I have to manage that 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 level of, of stress it doesn't mean I can't do things differently I just need a, more time to make things make sense in my brain um, it, because if without that I, I can't necessarily cope um, so that's one major thing Physically, I still have weakness on my left side. Um, I, for, for example, when I'm trying to do protective styling, um, with which is just single, you know, plaits, you whatever you want, or cane rolls or cone rolls, whichever way you want to pronounce it, I, I have to. It takes me a very long time to do that because it's very, very painful in my shoulder for me to be able to hold my shoulder up that way for long, you know, for long it really really hurts really badly so I can't do it and it takes me maybe to do just that four four plaits uh, you know four or six plaits 
that could take me well over an hour because I need to take rest in between now because this shoulder is much, much weaker. Um, I still trip over my own feet off balance. Yeah, definitely. Um, in the winter time or when it's cold, there is a lot of pain on my left side. Um, it's a weird thing to explain. It's like there's this uh, kind of, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. My my hands will often very just really freeze and then I say and they're stuck and then I can't use them for a long time. But they don't just freeze and then go into that that, that you know that position or, or or and stay that way. Uh, when they stay that way, they're also very 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 painful. The nerves are just all over the place. My skin is very very sensitive, including including the clothing that I wear. My bed sheets have to be extremely really really soft. They can't have uh, rough surfaces on it, otherwise I really can't sleep. Um, very often um, when I, I, I get burnt very easily, my pain threshold is not what it used to be at all. Um, I have to be very, very careful when I'm having things like baths and, and showers that I, I can't really have a bath because if I have a nice, where you can have a nice hot bath, I can't have that because on my right hand side, it will be like, oh, this is so nice. On my left hand side, it is screaming that I'm being burnt, that I'm absolutely being burnt. And I actually get burned very, very easily. I've got so many burn scars now that I've got. I've got this one here, I've got that one here. I've got a burn scar here, I've got another one here, I've got one here, I've got several on my on my legs as well, and my thighs, um, because anything with, uh, with heat that touches me actually burns. So there are many, many, many issues. Um, my skin very often on the left hand side is tingling um but then at the same time it's like i'm feeling both hot and cold at the same time you know when you're feeling freezing cold and you really your your body's starting to see to see that i get that very often um and when i wear clothing and that's long sleeve that doesn't feel nice on the skin it's like i've got an open wound and you know, and and you and you've got something like sandpaper or something that's been sort of rubbed on it, really raw. It is so painful, but it feels very hot at the same time. Um, on very very hot day, so hot days for a black girl who was born in an African country where the average temperature is thirty degrees. It's a weird thing that when it gets very hot, I need to stay away from the sun. Direct sunlight on me, and also like a heat stroke, I get very tired. And I mean, as I have to lie down, I can't really do anything um so yeah and the pain and the feeling of that is all the time it is very constant it's just as bad in the summertime as it is in the winter time um and i feel it all the time and it's something that i've learned to kind of block most of the time but it is extremely painful and it's very uncomfortable as well and very weird being touched on my left hand side it feels really horrible you can literally touch my skin and then put, take your hand away. And I could tell you 15 minutes later exactly where you touch because my skin will still have kind of tingling sensations all over it because it's still there. Um, my case bags are mostly okay, but sometimes they go still there. Or, well, not completely, but they'll, they'll dull. Um, you know, kind of like, um, more like dumping. Um, it's not full flavored taste. So I'd have to taste something that's got much, much stronger flavor uh, for me to be able to really taste the food. Um, so yeah, um, I think, yeah, I think that goes to the negatives. I'm sure there are, I think there are others, but I can't remember them that right now. So, so yes, I'm still, I'm still affected by it. But I think for me, the pain and the constant pain that's always there, or the uncomfortable feeling as if I'm being burnt, whilst literally someone has also got something, um, some ice also running on my skin. I get both of those sensations throughout. Um, the only weird area that we're weirdly enough where I don't feel that is actually on my side here. I don't feel any of that here. So about all over my arm. Um, oh yeah, my feet. Oh my God. When that feeling comes along and, and it is, it hurts. It is, I, it's a, walking becomes extremely painful. Um, nobody will ever know that and I don't show it, but it is so painful. It's like, it's like I've got, really blisters and I'm just walking on blisters all the time and it's so so painful uh, and 
but I have to learn to ignore it. I don't take medication for it because I choose not to. It's not because they've not been offered. It's because I, for me, I think of it as in, there is still a chance for me to improve. And if I have something that then kind of sort of blocks all of that, um, then I won't have the opportunity for my own brain to find a way of working through it. There are no messages going to my brain saying, you need to do this or you need to improve because I'm taking medication that's, that's blocking everything and doesn't make me feel anything. Um, also, I was offered antidepressant because it is sometimes very hard for me to get out of bed. Um, I don't want to at all. I would I would stay there. Um, I think probably about two, three weeks ago, you know, everyone else were under quarantine and everyone, you know, most people are uncomfortable with staying at home and they want to be out. I have not been bothered by not going out at all. In fact, if I was told to stay at home completely and not go out and I didn't have to, I wouldn't. And so that's a bit, I kind of start to think, hang on a minute, that's not quite right because other people are bothered by it, but I'm not. I would literally stay indoors. And then there was a day when I think things were really bad when I... when I needed to go to the, to the loo, but the thought of actually getting out of bed and actually going to the loo, <laughs> which is on the same floor, was too much. So I actually stayed in bed needing to go for probably about two hours until it became very painful. Um, and, when I look, and when I noticed, I thought, oh, oh, okay, now this is really not right at all. This, this is not right. I mean, the right other stuff in the background, which actually I think are affecting me in that way but hopefully they'll get resolved soon but yeah it, it can be a a struggle um but at the same time i've got motivation to carry on and to be the best person i can be not only for myself but more importantly for my kids so you know i the way i see it it's my job to be the best parent i possibly can and i can't do that if i'm I'm too sad all the time or unhappy all the time because they it's not healthy for them. Um, they need me to be strong, you know, I'm, I'm their mum. So I have to find a way of coping um, and it's not an easy thing, but I realized since my stroke that I'm a very, very, very strong person. I never realized it really, but I've, I've come to realize it and that's again one of the positives of coming out of with uh, you know of having had the, the stroke um would i go back now and change it and not have the stroke but not and go back to the old me um without the lessons i've learned without the peace that i now have within myself and I understand who i am actually no i wouldn't which is um a weird thing <laughs> to say I, obviously I wouldn't want the pain and, and everything else that my family had to go through when that happened but um, if it means going back to the old me how I was and how I felt about myself um, I would choose not to go back because I think I am a better me now it makes me sad as if I was a bad person I never was uh, I don't a bad person um, I did think about other people, but it was more, it was more internalized. Uh, I, I would feel sorry for someone or I'd want to help someone. And when I needed, I'd help someone, but it wasn't something that I pushed myself for. I wasn't, I just think I'm a, I'm a much better person now. And I think I understand people far more than I ever did. Um, I understand not only myself far more than I ever did, but the result of that is, the ability to be able to see where someone else is coming from, putting myself in someone else's shoes, whether I agree with them or not, just trying to understand where somebody else is coming from. And I think in many ways, in many ways, it's now, it's a gift. I, I find peace helping other people. I'm happiest when I'm helping somebody else. I kind of, accept that there are people out there who take advantage of others who who are not who you know who don't who pretend to be you know something else or somebody else or anything but to me as long as i'm doing what i need to do it, it's on them and i don't take that on board and i don't take their negativity on board and 
and I think that's the better way for me to be. I'm happier with that. I I I I like being. I like people, <laughs> which is weird. I actually do. I I I like people. I I. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. I told you it wasn't scripted. Um. I really, really, really love the connection with people. Um. I want to spend more time being able to to help others um, because yes there is a sense of selfishness about that because I am happier when I do that but it's also knowing that no matter how tiny or how small something is that you're helping somebody else and and it's just a little bit of your your own time in your life and then it makes a huge difference to somebody else and you can carry on you know with with your own life and and uh, yeah, and I and I think I, I I like that that part about me. I think I not even like I love that part about me, and uh, I love the fact that I understand who I am. I am happy in my own skin. When I say I'm happy in my own skin, it's not anything to do with color. It's more about I'm I understand, and I'm happy with my purpose in life, and and the fact that I deserve to be here. That I don't need to search for that that uh, that i just can't explain it that 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 sense of peace in my my in my soul of that i don't know that i would have ever had i had i not had the experience of my of my stroke um so yeah so i have many many positives about self-development and who i am and it's made me a better version of me a happier version of me and i despite the trials and tri tribulations of how I got here, I wouldn't change it for the world. And I, so there were things which are can, out of something horrible, um, you have to choose how you, you wish to go ahead, you know, how you wish to carry on, what you wish to do with, with that, whether you want to spend that time, you know, just carry on suffering and allow that to define everything or whether you take that experience and, make it a part of you and make it a better you know a better you it's a choice that you, you really make and and it's a it's an amazing thing for me to understand that, that that's my choice to understand my own power and to understand that if emotions as well it's really weird because i truly not understand when someone says it's the power that you give someone that you know to you allow them to to, to either treat you mistreat you or or hurt you I, I now truly understand what that means and i understand that it's my choice and i can choose to say you know what nah you don't have that you don't have that right you don't have that power of me i choose not to let you do that to me um it's a it's a it's a weird thing <laughs> it's a it's a weird thing to 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 have and i'm very lucky to get to have that now i'm i remember the old me that not knowing how strong that was as a person my own strength not realizing and understanding who i was and that i deserved to be on this earth it was something that i questioned and i won't go into a childhood i had my own issues of confidence and so on and i had eating disorder and then body dysmorphia and so on so I had other issues you'd never know it by the way unless you were very very close to me you'd never ever have known that i had any of those issues i wouldn't show it to anybody anybody at, at all you wouldn't know it um but they were there you know there was a huge lack of confidence in myself um and there were times when i wondered what what was the point don't get me wrong i didn't get to a point where i'm going to be taking my own life and that that's not it but there were times when i just I didn't get it and now I don't question it there is no no questioning it I I accept that this is life and and you have to make the most of it whilst you are alive and really make have the people around you who are positive in your life who are there for you who you are there for um, make it count um, and uh, and for me, it's 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 my kids having this time with my kids at home. 
I have loved it. I really have. I know there are other people who are struggling for for those others where for there is the reverse of them. Their their issues are they need to be out and they need to be you know have a sense of not just being cooped up indoors with their own thoughts. So I get that. Me, I'm same issues but different way where I'm too 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 happy being <laughs> indoors. So I have to be very careful with that. That is being you know loving your own company to the point where you don't let anyone else in can be a very negative thing. So you have to always be more self-aware of yourself, what works for you, what your triggers are, what, um, you know, issues, uh, you know, can lead to so that you can prevent that and have coping mechanisms and so on. So, so yeah, so I'm going to, for me, I'm going to do a bit more volunteering and helping others, um, just you know just just to be a better person um and i don't know what else to say of course this is such a long video look at the time oh, oh my god um but yeah so that's where i am so i have got issues yeah there are days when it's it's really hard I, there are weeks when if i don't manage my my stress level then i will i can't sleep i will go to bed at three in the morning i'll be up at four and then and then it will go, it will be like that for days and then i have to think okay you really have to sort this out because i can you can see the effects it starts having and so i yeah too long i spent too long talking the camera went you know what yours brunel yours chatterbox <laughs> but where was that but yeah i think that's um the update i wanted to thank the young lady who um pm me on instagram i won't say her name because i'm not too sure if she'll be happy for me to do that but i want to thank you so much for actually suggesting it um and it's nothing that i haven't thought about but for many anybody else out there really um i hope that you take the positive side of it it's not an easy thing it is something that's in my family my own mother's had three strokes or so the chances of me having another one uh, are very high I, I i was an extremely fit person for goodness sake super fit i was doing my pilates i was doing my yoga i was doing my kickboxing um you know I, and i was exercising at home um so and i was eating healthily so i did everything that i could and i still ended up in that situation so the chances are quite high that it would happen again um and the funny thing is i don't fear that what i fear is that i will still be here but there won't be much of me and that's i think that's it yeah that, that's that's my fear i think because having got to this point to be the idea of being caged in my own body when i was at the hospital i saw i saw all the people at different stages um and the worst were the ones who were prisoners in their own bodies and the only way they could communicate was with the eyes and seeing the absolute sorrow that they had i think that's not something i would want for me um that is not yeah to be under lock and key and imprisoned with you within your own body and not be able to communicate and that's 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 for me but at the same time <laughs> i've just said that you make of life what you will but you also have to know your limitations and and i accepted that and obviously without having to even say it for me it's just every day that goes by where i see my kids you know growing is kind of a, a blessing for me and i'm getting to a point where this year by the end of this year i'm going to have a son who's 18 years old and you know and my daughter is going to be 15 so it's um it's 
it's a blessing and I'm very very lucky that I'm here but also I I take pride in the fact that I'm here because of me because of who I am and how I am and because I pushed when the doctors and everyone was then therapists and everyone was telling me no no slow down and I and I knew my own mindset and 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 I literally had to, to say to them you work with me and if you want results and you want to work with me you're going to have to work the way I work I will take certain things into account but I will be doing this and and you know whenever I got exercises uh, I, I would say that's not enough you need to give me this and I'll be at it and I'll be moving my fingers and I'll be moving my jawline and I'll be reading my my lines to make sure that my speech would improve and I'll and I'll do it because that's the kind of mindset that I have so I pushed for that and in the old days I would never have been taken a compliment or understood my own sense of self-worth um, but now I know that that's me that's my strength that I that that pushed for that that's why I'm here um, and I think that's a good thing I think that's a yeah I think that's a positive thing because it sort of it gives you a, an understanding that when things get difficult you might struggle but you're going to make it um, and I know that I will do absolutely everything in my power to to make it and that's the best I can ask for so Gosh, this is so deep. <laughs> I didn't even think about what I was going to say. And this is so kind of open. But I'm hoping that this helps to somebody. Um, wherever you are, whatever stage you are in, in, in life, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And you have to understand that you won't get to appreciate that light at the end of the tunnel unless you've actually gone through the darkness that was in the tunnel in the first place, if that makes any sense. So sometimes you have to struggle to find a way out of things and a better way of doing things or of, of being the person you were meant to be some journeys are meant to be smooth and easy some have got you know different paths that you have to go through before you get there and sometimes that's what what you need um and other times maybe everyone's different but you make of it what you what you will and you can get better it's not an easy thing it still isn't easy most people would never understand it or know it when they see me um but i have to find a certain strength not just for myself but for my kids because it, it's my job that's my job <laughs> it's just um yeah i i can't um i can't burden them with that um so yeah so i'm that that that's that's me i speak to my kids about death and my passing it's morbid but it is it's something that i you can never really truly prepare for for a loved one going but at the same time i make i try and make them understand what's important in life um and i push them to be the best they can possibly be and uh, to be the best of themselves not not just not, when i say the best they can be it's not about the money or the riches and the big mansion no to be the best person you could possibly be in here and in here and and if you then also have the bonus of the jobs and the money and all that, that's fantastic. But if in here and in here, you're not right, then you're never going to... I just want what's best for them. <laughs> that's it. Um, so yeah, so that's my update. Three years after a stroke. Um, yeah. <laughs> I can't think what else to say. Um, but I hope that somebody finds this. Uh, useful helpful um, 
and it helps someone else when you're feeling really really down and you you're struggling and you're thinking what's the point it's it's for you you matter you know you're important you have a right to be here so that's why you would want to improve that's why you want to get better because you deserve to um yeah <laughs> that's it really so thank you for watching and yes i'm gonna go now <clears throat> it's very late i've got work in the morning so i better get going but um if you have any questions or anything like that obviously ask i'm quite open about things like this i don't think that it's important to it's a good thing to necessarily hide it and i hope that it helps with somebody out um out there so stay um stay safe people wherever you are across the world Au revoir, mesdames et messieurs. And goodbye. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you guys will see me, I, you know, as my normal self. <clears throat>